By the end of March 1971, it was clear to both Pakistan and India that war was inevitable. Mukti Bahini, the Bangladeshi resistance group supported by India, started to attack the ruling Pakistani military establishment all throughout East Pakistan. Mukti Bahini's uprising was fully supported by Sheikh Majdur Rahman, the democratically elected leader who won the 1970 general elections but was forbidden from forming a government by Pakistan. Pakistan was cut out of India by the British in 1947. The West Pakistan and East Pakistan were united by religion. However, West Pakistanis spoke Urdu, whereas the East Pakistanis separated 1,600 kilometers by land were ethnic Bengalis. West Pakistan was an Islamic republic, but the Bengalis in East Pakistan wanted their country to be secular. Over the period of time, West Pakistan began to dominate and discriminate the East Pakistanis. Things reached the zenith when the general elections held in 1970 saw Sheikh Majboor Rahman of the Awami League win 167 of the 169 of the seats. But the then Pakistani Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto refused to allow him to take part. Pakistan's arch-rival, India, saw the obvious weakness of the East Pakistan and raised a rebel army called Mukti Bahini. Pakistan was furious at the rise of Bengali nationalism in the form of Mukti Bahini. Mukti Bahini was no fringe guerrilla force. It consisted of 150,000 cadres, almost half the size of the Pakistan army of 350,000. It got its weapons and training from India. To counter the Mukti Bahini and the Indian army influence, the Pakistan army launched Operation Searchlight. It was a bloody campaign to eliminate all Bengali resistance in East Pakistan. This operation resulted in the genocide of more than 300,000 Bengalis and another 10 million fleeing to India. Faced with a huge influx of refugees and a humanitarian crisis, the then Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi found that attacking and liberating East Pakistan and rehabilitating the refugees there would be more economical than accommodating them in India. She also found the Western world, led by the US, to whom she complained, completely ignored the genocide in Bangladesh. Moreover, East Pakistan was separated 1,600 kilometers by land and 5,500 kilometers by sea from West Pakistan. This distance made defending East Pakistan impractical. President General Yahya Khan and his government saw the invasion coming, hence made their war plans ready. The East Pakistan military setup was very weak compared to India. It had only one infantry division made up of two battalions. Just one Air Force combat squadron was active in East Pakistan. East Pakistan Navy had only one active duty combat destroyer, the PNS Shilet, one submarine PNS Ghazi. PNS Ghazi was the only submarine in the Pakistan Navy that had the range to travel all the way from West to East Pakistan. The East Pakistan Navy defense consisted mainly of gunboats, which were of no match in defending from the attacking Indian Navy. General Yahya Khan assumed that if the war breaks out, then the Indian Army would easily overrun the East Pakistani Army. Hence, he decided to take war to India by attacking and capturing some parts in West India. This would put him in a better position to bargain for territories lost in the East. But he had grossly underestimated the power of the Indian military. To execute this plan, he first decided to start with a preemptive airstrike on the forward Indian airfields. This was called Operation Chinggis Khan. It was a copy of the strategy used by Israel in bombing Egyptian Air Force in the 1967 Six Days War. At 17.30 hours on 3rd December 1971, Operation Chinggis Khan commenced with a first wave of attack consisting of two Mirage 3s and six F-86 Sabres heading for the Patan Kot Air Base in India. The formation dropped 125 kg bombs on the runway. But the damage was not very serious as the Indian Air Force repaired it in a few hours. At 17.45 hours, four Mirages flying from the Sargodha Air Base attacked the Amritsar Air Station. The Mirages carried two 500 kg bombs each, which efficiently hit the first 300 meters of the runway, catering it enough to leave it non-operational for several hours. The second wave of attack commenced with two F-104 Starfighters hitting the P-35 radar stations at Amritsar, rendering it inoperable for nearly an hour. 
Within 45 minutes of these strikes, Pakistani troops had shelled India's western frontier and were reported to have crossed the border at Punch in the state of Jammu. At 1800 hours, the third wave of attack commenced with airstrikes striking Ambala, Agra and Halwara at the stations. The Pakistan B-57s flew seven single-plane sorties attacking air bases at Uttarlai and Halwara. During all this time, the IAF did not retaliate with any counter-strikes. The Ambala Air Base was hit again by a two-plane B-57 formation. The runway was hit with eight bombs, causing minor damage. The Agra Air Base, which lay the deepest among the Pakistan Air Force targets that evening, was struck by a two-plane B-57 formation. However, the bombs did not explode and the Agra Base was used for Indian counter-attack that very night. Later, four T-33 jets bombed the Uttarlai Air Base, damaging the runways so much that it could not be used for six months. At the same time, Jodhpur Air Base was hit by two B-57s, followed by Jaisalmer Air Base, which was so badly hit that the power supply in its connection was cut for six hours. Sirsa Air Base was hit with bombs equipped with time-delayed fuses, damaging the runway heavily and forcing the runway to be closed for the rest of the night. In spite of the massive bombings and multiple raids, the Pakistani jets inflicted minimal damage to the Indian airfields, except for cratering the runways in Ambala and Uttarlai and damaging a radar station. Unknown to the Pakistanis, the Indian intelligence had penetrated the Pakistan headquarters so much that they had pinpoint information about the impending attack even before Operation Chinggis Khan commenced. Due to the prior information, all the fighter jets of the Indian Air Force were kept in blast-proof pens and only the runways could be attacked by the Pakistani Air Force. That very same night, the Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi declared war on Pakistan. This war would be fought in two geographical places, the Western Theatre of War with mainland Pakistan and the Eastern Theatre of War in Bangladesh. India employed the Blitzkrieg technique in both the theatres to achieve a quick victory. For this reason, this was one of the shortest wars, taking only 13 days to liberate Bangladesh. The Indian Army was headed by the legendary General Sam Manakshaw, and the Pakistan Army was commanded by General Yahya Khan. By the time the Indian Prime Minister completed her declaration of war, the IAF began the counter-strike. At 2100 hours, the B-57 Canabras of the number 35, number 106, number 5 and number 16 squadrons were armed and dispatched. After sneaking inside the Pakistan border, the western Pakistani air bases at Buri, Mianbali, Sargoda, Rasalwala, Rafiki, Masroor and Karachi were bombed. Sargoda and Masroor air bases were heavily damaged and rendered the airway useless. The IA flew almost 22 sorties, destroying a total of 13 Pakistani aircrafts that day. In the western theater of war, at the early hours of 4th December 1971, the Canberra bombers of the Indian Air Force struck the East Pakistani air bases at Tejgaon and Kurmitola. The Pakistani Air Force operated only the Sabres, which lacked night fighting capability. So the Indian bombers were opposed only by the anti-aircraft fire of the Pakistani air defense. At noon that day, the hunter aircraft of the IAF attacked Chittagong and Narayanagunj fuel depots. Tejgaon was repeatedly attacked by the hunters of the number 7, number 14, number 17, and number 37 squadrons. And the cover for these planes were given by the Su 7s and the MiG 21s. Pakistani sabers involved in intense dogfights with the MiGs of the IAF. The IAF continued with the attack at Chittagong, Jasore, and Ishwardi airfields. IAF attacked several other targets, including the Tista Bridge, Chantpur, and Golando Ferry Guards. Meanwhile, the Indian aircraft carrier INS Vikram arrived in the scene and with the Seahawk fighter bombers and Brigade Alice ASW aircraft bombed the civilian airport at Cox Bazaar and Chittagong Harbour. The IAF lost six hunters and one SU-7 that day. In spite of the success, the IAF did not completely knock out the Pakistani Air Force in the first day. Please continue watching the remaining episodes in this historic war.